Oh, morning, Lord Howard. Good morning, Pooh Face. What would you like for... What do you please don't call me Pooh Face? What are you doing to our mother? She's not our mother, she's just called mother. But she thinks she's our mother. Yep, that's why I'm trying to fix the common sense circuits of mother's motherboard. She's completely irrational. Irrational? Does that mean she smells of bacon? No, no, it means she's got no common sense. Bacon's a common sense. So, she can't smell bacon? D -d -d be quiet. Has a post arrived yet? Oh, yes, it has, and there's something for you, actually. Brilliant! I've probably won that competition. Oh, what competition? It was on the back of the Bowlegs Crispy Nut Choc Tubes packet. You had to complete the sentence, Bowlegs Crispy Nut Choc Tubes have changed my life because, in 12 words or less. Oh, and what did you say? And I put, Bowlegs Crispy Nut Choc Tubes have changed my life because they just have. I am quietly confident that I'll win. I don't think the point is to do it in as few words as possible. You're supposed to say something nice about the product in a clever way. You don't know anything, do you? The prize is a lifetime supply of crispy nut chop tubes. Quick, quick, open it, open it! OK. Blimey, you came second! Oh, no, just my luck. You still win half a lifetime supply of crispy nut chop tubes. It's hardly worth bothering with. What was the winning entry? Let's have a look. Crispy nut chop tubes have changed my life because they have. Oh, it seems so obvious now. Why did I put they just have? What a waste of words. Why am I so unlucky? You can't really call it bad luck, little Howard. You've still won a ridiculous amount of breakfast cereal. Anyway, pipe down a second. I've just got to remove Mother's common sense chip. It's a very, very delicate operation, and I'd be grateful if you didn't make... <laughs> oh, oh, little Howard, I've come up with another of my big questions. How can I be lucky? I really, 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 really wish you wouldn't do that. Chaos descended on Purdy today when giant wishbones went on sale at the local supermarket. Critics say the two-for-one deal is pointless. I love monkeys, I love monkeys, all those happy little chirpy little monkeys with their tails and their bananas. I think that if we all were monkeys, we'd have happier manadas. Give me monkeys, lots of monkeys, for you know that it's the monkeys I adore. If my love said that she did not love those monkeys, I wouldn't love her. Except macaques. I, I don't like macaques. Why don't you like macaques? Don't you remember? A macaque did something very rude to our car area where we went to Monkey World. <laughs> oh, yeah, that wasn't very nice, was it? Nasty, dirty macaques. Come on, let's answer my big question. You have to wait till I've fixed Mother. What do you want for breakfast? Well, I'm not having any crispy nut chop tubes. Try to fob me off with only half a lifetime supply. The nerve. Well, what about some... Goody fruity bland flakes. They're very good for you. Well, they're not going to be good for me if they look so good for me. I don't eat them. What's this? Oh, that's Mother's common sense chip. I'm going to have to give it a good dusting, I think. Oh, a chip. Ooh, who can that be? Chips for breakfast! Hooray! Now just give it a light dusting of salt and pepper. Hello? Hello. Are you Little Howard? No, no, I'm Big Howard. If I was Little Howard, then Big Howard would have to be Massive Howard. Oh. Yeah. I don't think much of these chips. It's a good thing there's only one of them. They're horrible. Uh, I can't see at the moment, you see, because I'm carrying this enormous stack of cereal boxes. Oh, for a minute there I thought your face was massive and made of brown cardboard with <laughs> crispy nut chocks. No, no, no. These are for Little Howard. Uh, there's more in the helicopter. Well, brilliant. Well, come in, then. Dump them wherever you like, really. OK. Except there. OK, I haven't properly introduced myself. I am Mr Kenneth Bowlegs, Jr. of the Bowlegs Cereal and Offal Corporation. And I'm here to tell you that you... Oh. Oh, dear. You're that little Howard. No, I'm this little Howard. Are you that Kenneth Bowlegs? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm his son. Uh, no, now, this is a little awkward. Clearly states on the conditions of entry on the box that little Howard the cartoon boy 
is not allowed to enter this competition. Oh. I thought that meant I couldn't enter the box. I did have fitted it anyway. Why not? It just got stuck on my head and all the cereal spilt all over the place. There's no need to make a fuss, Big Howard. Now, why can you enter the competition? Oh. Yeah, why not? Well, the prize is a lifetime supply. And being a cartoon, uh, a lifetime for Little Howard could be potentially infinite. But I only want half a lifetime supply. Yeah. Well, yeah, but even that could bankrupt us. Uh, we learned this lesson in the 1930s when Goofy won a lifetime supply of our tripe. And he still gets 50 kilos a week delivered to the Magic Kingdom. Oh, I'm the unluckiest person in the world. Trust me to be a mortal. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. My dad won't like this, but I'll leave these here with our compliments. You don't eat cereal with salt and pepper, you derbrain. He means compliments, not c condiments. That's very good of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bonex. Pa. Okay, well I'll uh, I'll see myself out. Yeah. Yep. Ciao. Ch good. Ch ch ciao. See, what did I tell you? We've got to hurry up and answer my big question. I've got to improve my luck. If it means that much to you, I'll help you answer your big question just when I've fixed Mother's common sense chip. Where's the chip that was on here? Was it important? I mean, well, without that, Mother would be even more unbearable than usual. She'd, she'd have no grip on reality whatsoever. Oh. Where is it? Um, I think it's back here. There you are. Thank you very... Wait a minute, this is an oven chip. Are you sure? I just saw you get it out of the freezer. We, we need a computer chip, not just any old chip. That's not any old chip. It's crinkle cut. What happened to the chip that was back there? Oh, you don't want that chip. That chip tasted horrible. Well, they're not really designed... What?! You, you ate just a common sense chip! Uh, yeah, um... Uh... Kind of. You are absolutely, categorically not allowed to eat any sort of computer hardware ever again. What are we going to do now? I can poo in a sieve. Nah. I know. Let's boot up Mother. She'll know what to do. No! No! Hello, I'm just going to run some diagnostics. Won't take a jiffy. This present, one, two, three, yeah. Common sense chip. No, it's not there. She hasn't got a common sense chip, so I have no idea what's logical and what isn't. I think we should leave. No, it doesn't, and no, you haven't. Mother only thinks that because you've effectively eaten the part of her brain that stops her believing in superstitious old mumbo-jumbo like that. No, nah, don't say that! Say what? Old mumbo-jumbo, it's got 13 letters, we're doomed! Superstitious old toss, then. But toss has got four letters! The number four is considered extremely unlucky in oriental cultures! But this is pearly! It's the end of the world! Oh, come on. Pearly's not that bad. You might as well have broken a mirror with an umbrella that you've opened indoors while a black cat sat on your lap, then went off to kill a single magpie while a robin sang a plaintive song over your gable! Just plain bonkers. How do we fix her? I oh, know. Uh, Mother, you've got to let us out because we've got to go and buy you a new common mm -hmm. sense chip from the computer shop on the high street. Oh, yes. Vam, and peg and chips. It's not called that. I know, but it's a much better name than the one they've got. I can't let you out! Tis Friday the 13th! Evil spirits are abroad. Well, if they're abroad, they won't get us then. They'll all be sunning themselves on a beach somewhere. Well, you're not going out without a scarf. Well, I can get a scarf. Made of wood that's been blessed by the Pope. Oh, I, I don't have one of them. But that's why we've got to go out. We don't have any good luck charms in the house at all. We are completely defenceless, Mother. Well, look, looks like they're full, chocked, chock full of dreams. We, we better go and buy some more. All right. Get us as many lucky trinkets as you can. Stay close together, don't walk under any ladders or on any cracks in the pavement, and steer clear of seven sons of seven sons and puffins. A puffin's bad luck? Well, the numbers are dwindling in some areas and they're a trip hazard. Do you know what you need? Yes, we need some rabbit shoes and some horse's feet or something. And a four-leaf tover. And don't forget nutmeg! It's not my good luck.
No, but I thought I'd do a rice pudding. The last. I thought she'd never let us out. So, we, we need to get a horse's foot and a four-leaf Irishman. Oh, you don't believe all that hooey and flim-flam, do you? I need to improve my luck any way I can. No, no, we've got to get to the computer shop. If I had all these good luck charms, I'd definitely be lucky. How many times do I have to tell you this good and luck stuff is just a load of old nonsense? No! You didn't walk under the ladder! That means you must believe in luck. Uh, no, I don't. It, I mean, there might be someone up it and they might drop hot tar on my head. But there isn't someone up it. Well, well the wind might blow and it could fall on me. That would be unlucky, wouldn't it? Well, yes. Right, we're going to put page to this once and for all. Let's do a big experiment. You go and collect loads of things that are supposed to be good luck charms and see if anything good happens to you. And I'll go and do a load of things that are supposed to bring bad luck and see if bad things happen to me and, and we'll keep score. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea! And that'll prove once and for all it's a load of bunkum and humbug. It is not hunkum and bumbug. It'll prove that it's all completely true and real. Well, either way, I'll see you at the corner of St Lob and Chuck Handy's Park in about half an hour. Right. Good luck! <laughs> Who will win in the great good versus bad luck experiment? What further ill fortune will blight our heroes Friday the 13th? And are either of those proper sentences? Find out after these messages! Sorry he got struck by lightning, Pete. Still, they say lightning never strikes twice in the same place, eh? Knock on wood. I can't see any wood. Help me find some wood. Quickly! Sorry, Pete. I should have bought a lump of self-knocking wood. <laughs> Never get caught short again for a piece of wood to knock. New, specially formulated knock wood to ensure that you or your friends don't meet with a horribly ironic accident. Knock on wood, no need with new self-knocking wood. So get shopping and let the wood do the knocking. Oi! Do you want to buy and or sell a vast quantity of useless superstitious tat? Then do we have a feel full of herberts for you. Get down to the Jumbo Mumbo Jumbo Jumbo sale, starting Tuesday week. Getting married? Need something old? Need something new? Something borrowed? Something blue? We got plenty of each. All borrowed items must be returned to the people we borrowed them from. No money is returnable. Or why not come down and throw your money away down our ever so good luck wishing well? Each wish just costs two pounds. Or why not make three dreams come true for a fiver? No money is kept in the wishing well overnight. All major credit cards accepted. Can I keep this? So what are you waiting for? Come and have a mooch around the Jumbo Mumbo Jumbo sale in a big field near you. All products are guaranteed to bring you good luck. Oi! No products are guaranteed to bring you good luck. And now, back to the great good luck, bad luck experiment! Will little Howard find all the good luck charms he needs? Will Big Howard bring bad luck upon himself? Will they prove whether good or bad luck exists once and for all? How should I know? I just work here. I, I just said that, just there, just... He probably thought you'd forgotten. You do have a notoriously short attention span. I suppose I do, yeah. Head like a sieve. Who are you, by the way? Big Howard? Oh, right. <laughs> Just a coincidence?
customer, and for that, you win a prize of five pounds. <laughs> <Pounds. laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. Fancy meeting you here. What a stroke of luck. It must be because I've got all these good luck charms. No, it isn't, and no, it wasn't. You shouldn't step on the cracks in the pavement, Big Howard. It's bad luck. That is just a load of nonsense. I've been stepping on the cracks in the pavement all day and nothing... I'm saying nothing. It's very good of you. Except... <laughs> Look at this doesn't prove face. anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've collected a horseshoe, a four-leaf clover, four lucky rabbit's feet attached to the end of a lucky rabbit, and I've avoided the cracks in the pavement, and people have kept giving me money. And so it's all true. Good luck charms do work. How did you get on? I, I did all the things on the bad luck list, and I got beaten up by a man with a big moustache three times. Perhaps men with big moustaches are bad luck. No, it's just coincidence. It's, it's nothing to do with luck at all. I just happen to really, really... Really annoyed, the same furious man with a big moustache three times. Oh dear. <laughs> but it's not all bad. The second time he chased me, I hid in the electrical shop and I bought Mother's common sense chip. You should probably go home. It'll be safer. Not necessarily. Mother's probably gone haywired. I, I only hope the house is still standing. Ah, big and little Howard. I foresaw you coming here when you said you'd be back later. Oh no. What's going on? I am Mystic Mother. Look deep into my webcam and I shall tell your fortune. Did you get me nutmeg? Oh, I knew we forgot something. Nutmeg! Then you will be cast! Ah! With no rice pudding for tea. Oh, for goodness sake. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to me! These good luck charms don't work! I'm doomed! Perhaps you are, perhaps you're not. Only the stars at my favourite online horoscopes page can tell. Cross my keyboard with silver. Big Howard, can I borrow 50p? You've just been given five pounds and a massive cheque for five pounds. They're not silver. If I'm cursed with bad juju, you'll be sorry. Ha, juju, I poo-poo your juju. Place your palm on my monitor. Ah. I see you used a blue barrow and sticky stick glue stick. And... and you had a bag of cheesy squids for lunch. That is amazing. She was just looking at all the muck on your hand. Your lucky I've had enough number of this. is 85 <coughs> million billion. Your lucky colour is magenta. Your lucky EastEnders character is Ian Veal. Brilliant! He'll never leave! And your lucky internal organ is the duodenum. Oh, what are you doing? Diagnostics won't take a jiffy. Discs one, two, present, common sense chip. That's there, good, I need that. George Michael MPEGs. Oh, George, you just haven't met the right computer yet. Date, Friday the 13th. Now, where was I? You were telling me what my lucky internal organ was. Ha! I fixed her and replaced her common sense chip. Oh, what did you do that for? I'm so unlucky. If you think you're unlucky, you should go and talk to unlucky Les. He lives at number 12A down the road. He used to live at number 13, but that got eaten by ants. Of course, Unlucky Les. What, what's his real name? No, he was christened Unlucky Les. That's unlucky. He's been struck by lightning eight times. He's the unluckiest person I've ever met. Everyone thinks so but him. You see, luck's just about the way you look at it. I'll get him round for a cuppa. He'll be very glad of it. His living room got hit by a meteorite this morning. Are you all right, unlucky Les? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. A slate just fell on my head, but well, I've had worse. It's not even from our house. Come in. Oh, ooh, better not shake hands. Broke all my fingers this morning. Oh. Uh, Do you, you have a nice holiday? Oh, lovely, yeah. Well, the, the campsite exploded, but... Again? <laughs> yeah, well, it's only France. <laughs> um, can't see some chicken crisp and digestives? Oh, no, thank you. I had a rich breakfast of jammy dodges and veal, so I'm stuffed. Oh, lovely. Yummy. 
So, little Ad, what's all this about you thinking you're unlucky? Well, I've had a terrible day, and this Friday the 13th. I didn't win a competition, I came second, and then I was disqualified from the whole thing for being a mortal. Well, let me just stop you there. I mean, most people don't even come close to coming second in a competition. I came third once in the unluckiest man in the world competition, but then the uh, venue was flooded by a freak tidal wave. Oh, blimey. Yeah, we were in Switzerland at the time. There's no sea for miles around. I don't know how that happened. And as for being immortal, oh, I'd give my right arm to be immortal if it hadn't been eaten by wolves. Blimey, you are unlucky, aren't you? Oh, no, I don't think so. I've, I've got my health, you know, I've got, I've got my family. No, 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 in my book there's no such thing as luck. It's how you deal with what life throws at you. But you've been struck by lightning eight times. Yeah, and I survived eight times, didn't I? And your living room got hit by a meteorite this morning. Yeah, while I was in the bath. I mean, that's good luck in my book. But we proved it. I collected a load of lucky stuff, and loads of really good things happened to me. A big Howard did loads of unlucky stuff, and he got beaten up three times. Man with a big moustache. Well, what unlucky things did you do? Well, he tried to break a mirror, and the bloke who owned it beat him up. Moustache. Well, avoiding breaking mirrors isn't lucky or unlucky. It's just, it's just common sense. I mean, broken glass is very dangerous. And as for deliberately breaking someone else's mirror, well, that's just stupid. <laughs> oh, no offence. Yeah. None taken. What, what, what else do you do? He opened an umbrella in doors. Well, again, that's just dangerous. You know, you could, you could poke someone in the eye. I actually poke six people in the eye. You see, these things that are called unlucky are just our forefathers' way of trying to drum a bit of common sense into us. What else did he do? He put a pair of shoes on a table. In a restaurant. Well, that's just idiotic. Oh, sorry, you can take all the offence you want from that. Well, I will. No, no, the whole shoes on a table thing probably came about mm -hmm. because, well, it's unhygienic. But what about the good luck charms? I collected loads of them and lots of people just kept on giving me money. Ten pounds he got. Mm. Well, are you lucky or unlucky? Because you still didn't win the competition, did you? <laughs> See, good luck charms didn't fix that. Yeah. It's all coincidence. <laughs> if I spent all my time working out whether what I did or didn't do would make me lucky or unlucky, for well, I'd never leave the house. <laughs> Unless it got eaten again by those giant fat ants. Mm. No, luck is what you make it. Let me put it this way. They say that good things always come to those who wait But if that's true, mine's running late Had so much bad luck it's a crime But at least it's here on time At least you are you, so don't be blue You could be me They say that lightning never strikes the same place twice If that was true, that would be nice but I found that lightning strikes wherever lightning likes. It usually strikes me, it usually strikes me. At least you're not me. At least you're not me. At least you're not me. At least you are you, so don't be blue. You could be me. They say that bad things always come to you in threes. If that was true, I would be pleased. It seems with me bad things are able to come in all the three times table. At least you're not me, at least you're not me, at least you're not me. At least you're not me. At least you're not you. At least you're not me. At least you're not you. At least you are you, so don't be blue. You could be me. Your words will really help to get me through. I'm very glad that I'm not you. But let's what do you do? A good point and one very well made, little Howard. Let's put it this way. What's your favourite drink? I like orange juice. Oh, well, now I prefer something a bit stronger myself. What? Orange juice with bits in? Yeah, orange juice with bits in. Wow, there's a man who can really handle his vitamin C. I'm glad that I'm me. 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 Are you all right, unlucky Les? 
You got struck by lightning indoors. You really are unlucky, aren't you? <sighs> no, I'm fine. That was all the time. Never mind about that. You could have been killed, little Howard. Oh, charming. Mr. Bolex Jr. from the cereal company. Where'd you pop up from? Ah, well, I've been uh, locked in your loo all day, I'm afraid. Yeah, I was a bit too embarrassed to call for help. But uh, don't worry, I finally managed to break the door down. Oh, bri what? Yeah, no offence to you, unlucky Les, but the fact that little Howard so very nearly died proves that he's not immortal. You see, little Howard doesn't age, but his life can end. So we can give you the prize. Brilliant! I'm gonna die! I am so lucky. So, where do you want us to put the half a lifetime supply of cereal, then? Well, if you could just pop it out the back with your head... Oh, my God! Oh! Ow! Marvellous. I love crispy nut choc tubes. Are you, uh, you going to eat that chicken? Uh, oh, a little peckish. Welcome to the show. Hello. Now, you might be wondering, what's happened to my leg? Well, I'm afraid I've fallen foul of theatrical superstition and Little Howard. Yes, in the theatre, you're not supposed to say, good luck before a show. That's bad luck, apparently. Yes, actors prefer you to say, break a leg. But I said good luck. Of the two, I think it sounds more friendly. Actors also think it's unlucky to say the name of the Shakespeare play Macbeth. Macbeth is a play about witches, so actors think it's cursed. Yes, unfortunately, the theatre we're in is also putting on a production of Macbeth, entirely performed by dogs. Yeah, it's called Muckwoof. <laughs> yes. Yes. The other thing that actors don't like you to do is to whistle when you're backstage. But I didn't know that, so I was just whistling the theme to, to Doctor Who. We've all done it. And when they heard me whistle, all the dogs from McWoof went crazy and, and they knocked Big Howard over. But that didn't break my leg. No, no. It was at that point, though, that little Howard remembered to say, break a leg, and unfortunately, one of the dogs was very, very obedient. And it knew karate. He knew karate better than he knew about theatrical superstitions. He karate chopped my leg and broke it in four places. He got three encore. <laughs>